Hey everyone! Trying to recreate models is really good practice. Being comfortable with how to achieve simple shapes will always come in handy no matter what you want to create. I strongly recommend you find things that you like and try building them whenever you get a chance. So that's what we're going to do. Make a gyroid, because I love them. Hit X to delete the default cube. Shift A to add a circle. Last gyroid we started with a 16 vertex circle, which turned out to be a bit too much. So let's start with an 8 this time. Switch to vertex select. Go into the modifier tab and add a subdivision modifier. Go into front view with numpad 1 and orthographic view with numpad 5. It should say front ortho over here. Now with this circle selected, we're going to hit E to extrude out a loop. Hit enter to confirm the extrusion, then hit G and Z to move the new circle straight up on the Z axis. While building objects, I like to be in wireframe view. Use Ctrl R to add edge loops on existing faces. The subdivision modifier will help ensure that there are smooth transitions between each loop. Hit S to scale each edge loop to the desired size. Use Alt Select to select entire loops and continue extruding and shaping. Let's switch from flat to smooth shading. In edit mode, select all with A, and under the face menu, select shade smooth. Edge loops can be rotated by selecting them and hitting R. Keep building the main body shape. To make this little metal band look like a separate shape, we'll use an edge split modifier. Move it into the top modifier slot, and deselect edge angle. Alt select this lower edge loop, hit Ctrl E and choose mark sharp. Extrude grab and move down on the Z axis. Put an edge loop down the middle and scale it out slightly. Extrude and scale at this bottom part. Hit Ctrl E and clear sharp from this bottom edge loop. Extrude and scale the bottom loop to round the corner. And finish off the shape. Alt select this edge loop and mark it as sharp with Ctrl E. Finish the bottom part and add edge loop to get the bottom to curve how you want it to. Let's rename our object in the outliner. I want to apply the modifiers, which is hard to undo, so let's archive this object by copying it in object mode. Disable the visibility of the original object. Now in object mode, apply the modifiers in order. And here's what it looks like currently. We have some extra edge loops that we probably don't need. They can be removed by hand or with a decimate modifier. Switch to planar and choose the angle limit for collapsing geometry. 5 degrees is default and works just fine in this location. Now apply the decimate modifier. Some of these unneeded edge loops were eliminated, and on the bottom, some of the edges were deleted as well. These are now end guns, but it's fine. Make sure you check over everything to make sure nothing got decimated out of existence that you wanted. So I'm just making sure all of my horizontal edge loops are still complete. Hitting Ctrl T will automatically triangulate everything, which you can see gets rid of end guns. But we don't want everything to be triangles at this point, so Ctrl Z to undo. Now make any changes to the shape that you want. Fill in the openings on the end by extruding, hitting M, and choosing Merge at Center. Double tap G to edge slide this loop to give it a little point. Extrude and merge the bottom as well. I looked back at my reference pick and made some final shape adjustments by circle selecting areas with C and just using simple transforms. If you adjust any of these sharp edges, make sure to select both overlapping edge loops, otherwise you'll get openings in your mesh. Using either circle select in wireframe mode, or box select is probably the easiest way to select everything that you want. Now let's make the arms. Add an 8 vertex circle. Position and in edit mode, rotate and scale. Extrude and use the various transforms we discussed earlier to make some arms. Add a subdivision modifier to help with shaping. Select all and shade smooth.
When you're happy with it, add a mirror modifier and use the body as the mirror object. Alright, now let's move on to texturing. Select the body and go into the shader editor. Open up the material tab over here and click new to create a new material. Switch over to rendered view and let's set up our scene real quick. Go into the render properties tab and change to Eevee. In the world properties tab, click this yellow circle next to color and choose environment texture. Click open and use an HDRI scene lighting. I'm going to use the same one I used on the first video called blinds. You can get free HDRIs from Polyhaven. Link in the description. Back in the Render Properties tab, under Film, click Transparent, so that our HDRI doesn't show up in the scene or renders. And now let's start adjusting our material. To begin with, just choose a base color for your material. I went with an orange similar to the reference. And we want to create this clay look, so hit Shift A and add some nodes. We'll use a noise texture, mapping, and texture coordinate node to be exact. Connect them up like so. Add a bump node, and connect the noise factor to the height input. Connect the normal to the normal here. Drop the strength and adjust the scale. Adjust the roughness slider on the principal shader node. Name this material so that we don't forget what it is. And now let's create this gray material. Click this plus sign to add a new material slot. And either create a new material or use an unused one that already exists. Switch to face select. Alt select all these loops of faces, and with the second material selected, hit assign. Adjust the material color. And add our favorite nodes to the material. There's a faster way to add these nodes with the Node Wrangler add-on, but we're skipping that for today. Connect everything up. Add a mix RGB node, and select the first color slot. Use the eyedropper to sample the shader color. Same with the bottom slot. Select the bottom slot, and drag this bar down to darken the lower color. Connect this factor to the mix factor and the color output to the shader color. Now our noise texture adds some color variation to the gray material. Adjust the scale. Add a color ramp. Connect the noise factor to the color ramp input. Connect the color ramp output to the shader roughness. Change the color ramp stops to two very similar gray colors. And slide the stops in a bit. This gives a tiny bit of variation to the gray material's roughness. It's not very noticeable, but it makes it catch the light in a slightly more interesting manner. Select the arm, and in edit mode, add the body color to it. Add a new slot, and add the gray color to it. The reference picture shows the tips of the arms slash hands are gray, so select these faces and assign the gray color. Now let's reselect the body and the original color, and set it up so that we can paint on the details. Add a mix RGB node and use the orange color on both color slots. Add an image texture and create a new texture. Name it something and connect the color output to the factor. Adjust the top slot to be a brown color similar to the detail from the reference picture. We'll want the stuff we draw in to have a little bit of depth as well. So add a bump node, and connect the color to its height input. Add a vector math node here, and add these two bump nodes together. Now let's unwrap our object. In edit mode, switch to edge select. Alt select this edge loop, and while holding shift, alt select this one. Hit control E and choose mark scene. Switch to face select, and select a face here. Hit Ctrl L to select this entire UV island. Switch over to the UV editor, and with the mouse over the viewport, hit U, choose Unwrap. In order to paint in the face, this area is really the only place we need to unwrap. But remember, there are an endless amount of ways in which you can lay out seams and unwrap your objects. Also, you can edit the UV layout quite heavily in a bunch of ways, using all the same transform keybinds from the 3D viewport. Let me show you something kinda cool, you don't have to follow along. In some instances, it'll be easier to have the UVs laid out in a grid-like pattern. In those situations, choose a single face, select and scale the Y location of the top and bottom vertices by zero to flatten them out, and then with face select, select this face, and hit A to select the rest of the faces. Then hit U, and choose Follow Active Quads. Hit OK, and all the other faces will conform to the selected face. So you really have quite a bit of control over how your UVs are laid out. So, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to use this for this model, but I thought it might be something handy to know. 
If you want to take a look at how well you laid out your seams, click this drop down menu and enable display stretching. Dark blue is the best, all the way to red being the worst. This looks pretty good. Alright, let's start painting. Switch the viewport over to texture paint mode and the bottom panel to the image editor. Switch the mode from view to paint. I want to make the image completely white instead of black, so switch to the fill tool, go into the tool tab over here and make sure white is the active color. Click here to fill the texture in with white. We could have just generated this texture as white initially, but I forgot. Switch the color to black by hitting this icon and switch to the brush tool. Now try painting on your object, and nothing is happening for me. There's a couple of things that are frequently the issue. First is the normals might be inverted. Tab into edit mode, select all, and hit Control N. Choose recalculate outside. Tab back into texture paint and try again. If that doesn't work, the other thing that might be wrong is that I'm painting over white with white, so swap the active color over here again. And there we go, it's working. But it's not quite looking how we want it to. Control Z to undo. The first thing I want to do is make sure my texture looks the same on both sides. We can do that by enabling symmetry. I want it mirrored along the X axis. So enable X mirroring. Now when I paint, it'll attempt to mirror it on the other side. We could attempt to draw in each circle by hand, but we can also set up our brush to make this process much quicker. Under falloff, we have quite a few options that affect how the brush behaves. And we can add more control points to this curve to get it to look exactly the way we want. Kind of rotate your model so you're drawing the circle more flat on the side. Hit F to adjust the size of your brush. And preview your custom curve falloff. And now just undo and place until you get it in the right area. It's not quite right, so go back into the curve and make some adjustments. And now let's try again. I think that looks pretty good. There's another way to lay in these circles, and it will work much better for this next part. Switch over to constant falloff and adjust your brush size. Paint in a completely black circle here. Swap to white and make your brush size just slightly smaller. and then swap back and forth to get the bands to look how you want. We have one last thing to paint in, these lines down here. So over here, switch the stroke method to line, and adjust the brush to line thickness with either F or the bracket keys. Click drag in one side, and both should appear. Last thing to do is the bands around the bottom. We can unwrap and paint them in, or to make the spacing easier, just procedurally draw them in with nodes. Switch back to edit mode, and I'll select these face loops. In the material tab, add a new slot, and use the main body material. Duplicate the material here, and assign it to the selected faces. Back into the shader editor, and let's delete a couple of these unnecessary nodes. Add a radial texture gradient and connect like this. Duplicate the bump node and turn up the strength. Add a mix RGB node here. Turn up the factor to 1 and switch the mode to add. This will allow us to add our bands to the normal later and make them look like they have some depth. Add a wave texture here and the beginning of our bands will show up. Drop on a color ramp and switch it to constant. Adjust the stops to get the desired look, and maybe change the scale on the wave texture so this final band is the right thickness. Now connect the color ramp to the bump node's height. And now our textures are all set up and interact with the light, which I think is pretty cool. Don't forget to save your images. Saving a blend file won't save your painted textures, and it's a super bummer to lose them, so save, save, save. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, and leave us a comment on what you'd like to see us make. If you'd like to help support the show, we have a Patreon. Thank you again, stay safe, I love you all. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.